We are so grateful for God and what he has given us uh, today. Are you happy that you are alive today? You know, I went somewhere yesterday <laughs> and the preacher, oh, oh man, as he prayed, they made me really appreciate the organs in your body right now that are, are turning the air that you are breathing into powerful oxygen that people are buying and it is very, very expensive and it is also scarce. Again, very Maholi, you know, those things, they are working, they are functioning. Actually, every morning you wake up, you should breathe in and breathe out and scream. If where, if where you are, nobody will get hurt. You just scream. Say, Mom, Asante! You know, when we were growing up, um, I had a friend of mine who went to Kagumo High School, at to Kagumo College, and he met some other gorillas there that we were preaching when in high school. And every time at five, they would walk up on the, on, on um, you know, the cubicles. Cubicles, some um, high schools, Zigine, Sirikuwa, Zimejengwa, Zote, Riko, the same. Yani, haina mlango. Na hayendi baka mwisho. Wanapanda hapa juu. Kwa uka kwa ukuta. Na wanapiga nduru. Jesus is coming! Every day, just to remind the students that Jesus is coming. And you can remind yourself that it is well. And your lungs are well. Today we are looking at Joshua chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. Only those two verses because we want to look at something that uh, is also exciting to us. This is what the Bible says in verse 11 and 12 of chapter 5 of Joshua. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread, and roasted grain. The manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate the produce of Canaan. Manna ceased. And why it ceased? Because that day they ate some produce of the land which was unleavened bread and roasted grain. The manna stopped. I have a feeling that some of us will have to get to that level where the man has stopped. Are you okay? Could be somebody who is not okay there. Nasi anguke, kama yutikas. For 40 years, the children of Israel have been eating manna. Forty years. The guys that are now have crossed over Jordan, they don't know what unleavened bread is. They don't know what the roasted grain is. They have no clue, no idea. Because they met their fathers and mothers eating manna in the wilderness. But when they crossed over into Jordan, manna ceased and it ceased because they ate something that they had not eaten before, unleavened bread that they prepared from the wheat that they found in the land, and grains that they roasted. So manna stopped. So manna must have been a waiting process. Something waiting for something to come. They've been waiting. What were they, were they waiting? So manna was a waiting. Is the waiting area. You wait upon God. Because in Genesis... 13, 14 to 17, there is this that they were waiting for. God made the following promise to Abraham. And the Lord said unto Abraham, 
after that Lot was separated from him, lift up thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then they shall, thy seed shall be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. What a promise. And a couple of years down the road, the same promise is repeated to Isaac in Genesis 26 verse 3. So John in this land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee. For unto thee and to thy seed, I will give all these countries. What a wonderful promise. And I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. The same promise is repeated to Jacob. Genesis 28 verse 13 and 14. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, the God of Isaac, and the land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. What a promise. To three generations has been repeated. Same promise. That I will be with you and I will give you. The land that you can see is yours. What a promise. Joseph, after many years again, Joseph finds himself, he's just about to die. And Genesis 50 and verse 24, Joseph tells his brothers, I die and go with, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land and to the land which you saw to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. What a promise. That the guy is dying, but the guy is saying, God will visit us. God will still come. I, I think there is a lot of faith here. Imagine Abraham died and he had not gotten the whole land. Isaac died. He had not gotten the whole land. Jacob died. He died in Egypt. He had not gotten the whole land. Joseph dies. He has not gotten the whole land. But he dares to, to tell his brothers, the Lord will come. I think one of these days you need to rise up and look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself the Lord will come. Because you need to go back all the promises that he has said and you say the Lord will come. You know, one of the hardest things is to say it when it is happening. H have you lost a dear one? And everybody is telling you to understand that God is still good. And you say it. God is good. But your heart and your head are saying to others, not to me. At that time I tell people, keep on saying he is good until your spirit, your heart and your mind says amen. Don't give up. Because if you give up, you get into depression. But keep on telling yourself, God is good. Where kichwa, atakama unakata. God is good. Where roho, atakama unapigana nayo. God is good. Joseph is dying. And he's saying, although we have not gotten there. Mimi ninakufa. You know, I, I, I don't know whether sometimes you think it is, it is interesting when somebody knows they are dying and they tell you they are dying. Don't you want somebody to tell you? Alice, don't you want me to tell you? Yeah. That you don't wonder and ask. You know somebody just tells you, by the way. Normally, when you are told that, what do you do? Wendy, Pepombaya, Nyeusi, Shindwe. 
You know, my mother, my mother-in-law kept on telling us. Actually, she knew she was going. She told us. And she wasn't sick. But she says, when you hear. And then we tell her, Then she says, when you hear. And then I would tell her, no. You have said, okay. You know, finally she fell down and died. So when we got the information, we cried a lot, but we remembered. People remembered. Alituambia, akienda, tutiguonawe. But even if they told you they are going and they go, you will still grieve and mourn. But until your spirit and your head and your mind believe that God is good and they say amen, you will still be struggling. But don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Joseph tells his brothers, Nakufa. Dio. Nakufa. Lakini mungu atakuja. And when he comes, he will take you to the land that he promised our fathers. There is a place that we are going which is called heaven. Let's keep talking about it until my spirit and my mind and everything within me says amen. Because there is a place. Even when the circumstances and situation are not saying amen around me, I will tell myself. Hallelujah. How about Moses? After they have been slaves now for over 400 years, Moses comes. I don't know where, where Moses is coming from. But Moses comes and he is told by God to do, to go take his, the children of Israel from Egypt. And he is telling God, Kwani umekua wapi? I mean, ata wata niuliza umekua wapi? Tena wata niuliza unaitakwa nani? Aroneza niuliza kwa kwa ni wapi? But finally Moses agreed and after he agrees in the book of Exodus 6 and verse 6 to 8 he says this, wherefore God is telling him, wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will rid you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgment and I will take you to be for a people. I will take you to me for a people. And I will be to you a God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. What a promise. This man of God. He has God and he agrees in his spirit. Now this is going to happen. Now tell the children of Israel. This is the promise. So these great promises from the Lord are being fulfilled now. We talked about having the Passover. They have eaten the Passover and they are eating the fruit of that land, the Passover. They are enjoying the grains of that land, the unleavened bread. They are enjoying and immediately they enjoy it. In the promise, the manna ceased. And there are some of you, there are some things that God will have to cause them to cease. Because if you continue having manna, and the provision of God, there is some confusion in the camp. Now, sitake kuwa na mana, mugu moja hapa kwa mana, na mugu wigine hapa, kwa sabu utapigwa, wakanani watakupiga. You need to leave one completely, so that you can conquer. And it is by conquering you will be meeting food. There will be food. You know, I was telling the first service, there was one time there was a lonino, which hit where I come from. Where I come from, if you were to draw, we have Abadea, then where Akina Faith and Akina Washo come from is a flat land. Then there is a slope. Then there is a basin. Then there is a slope. Nyondia. Then there is a slope. Naivasha. So this El, El Nino heat up. Ikakuja imebeba mbuzi, kondo, nini. My brother woke up one morning, akakuta anambuzi. 
So we were to tell him, hiyo mbuzi si yako. Ni kuletwa imeletwa tafuta mwenyewe. Of course wenyewe walikuwa kija wakitafuta vitu zao. But these children of Israel have gotten into a land and people are fleeing away. They are enjoying wheat, barley, grains and they have taken the Passover and manna has ceased. I ask myself, this manna, why has it ceased and what was it? Why did God give the manna for 40 years? And why now does it stop? And that is the question, those are the questions that we want to ask ourselves. Now manna ceased. If you want to jog your mind a little bit, just think, two to three million people, you want to buy them bread in the wilderness. When we went to Israel, I was praying. Maybe the team could not know I was praying. I was praying our vehicle not to get a mechanical problem after we crossed the Red Sea into the wilderness of sin. Because it is real wilderness. Real. Uwoni kitu, uwoni mutu, juatu. Alafu unaenda muna tokezea mahali pako na kaoa sisi. Hata hapa utaki kuachwa. Iyo mulima watu walipanda iyo ya sinai watu walipanda usiku. Mchana tulipo paona hatungi ya panda. No wanda wanatufikisha usiku, tunapanda usiku, na tunakutana na ngamia zinapanda juzi kiteremuka kuna watu wakona biashara zao kule. Kwa sababu mchana ukipaona, uwezi enda. And then you imagine, <laughs> Moses, you have two million, three million people. You want to buy them bread in Egypt. Because those were the civilized people. You go back to Egypt every morning to buy bread, to buy bread. You will be a slave. And God had to cut off Egypt into the children of Israel. But for 40 years, the children of Israel suffered. Why did they suffer? Because they never left Egypt. It was with them always. Oh God, we had this and that. He gives them bread. Oh God, we had uh, chicken. He gives them quail. Oh God, you know, they, they were complaining because they never left Egypt. But when they crossed over to Jordan, we say they prepared themselves. There was sanctification. They, they got circumcised and they were venerable and God gives them a Passover so that now everything has been passed Egypt is no longer there. Jo Jer Jordan is past. We are in the promised land. No going back. We have to go up and conquer. What is the picture of manna? Picture of manna. What does it show us? Manna was a gift from God. It was the grace of God. It was God providing food for his, to understand and to understand why he sent to them we need to turn back to Exodus 16 that passage the whole of it teaches us why God sent the manna and what it represented but I want to point out some few truths that I find here Exodus chapter 16 verse 1 to 5 that if you read all of it you'll find out why did this manna come Manna was sent as a response to the murmuring of the children of Israel and their complaining. So manna was, they complained, he threw manna to them. Number two, they were hungry. And they missed the food that they used to eat. So God gives them food to eat. You know they were crying for food. Food God gave them. And God tells Moses something else. That this kind of food will be rained from heaven. I'm raining it from heaven in verse 4. 
So God also tells Moses that manna will serve as a testing for the people of Israel. God will use their response to the manna to test their obedience to his law. So every time they ate manna, they would know from within themselves, this is a test. And the way I behaved with this manna, I will either pass the test or fail the test. It was a test of obedience to the law of God. No wonder the greedy ones, they would pick a lot so that they can have some to spare. And when they wake up, they discover what they kept were worms, not bread. There is a blessing that God can give me. It's a blessing. But if I hold it, if I don't give it to others, if I don't use it, it doesn't become a blessing anymore. It can rot in my hands. Exodus 16 verse 14 to 35 is a long passage. But we can break it into little pieces. But you can read it at your own time. Because manna was a clear picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was an Old Testament type sent from the Lord to point a picture of his saving grace. To paint, to paint a picture of his son that God would send as a savior to the world as manna to the people of God. In Exodus 16 verse 14, it's, it, it simply says, if you, if you read it, it was as, as small as a whole frost to the ground. It was small. And this speaks of the humility of our Savior. He is the creator of the universe, right? He is God Almighty, yes. Yet he came into this world and robbed himself in a human flesh. He humbled himself, became a servant so that he might die for his own people and redeem them. It was more, very tiny. Number two, it was round. The same verse, Exodus 16, 14. Exodus 16, 14. Like a circle that has no beginning and no ending. Jesus Christ is eternally God. He did not have his beginning at Bethlehem when we hear of the story of his being born. Because in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 58, before Abraham was, I am. That's what he told the Pharisees. So just as he told them then that he had no beginning, we know even today he has no beginning and he has no ending. He is the Alpha and he is the, the Omega. It was round. Number three, it was white. Exodus 16, 31. It was white. White like the purest of snow. The witnesses of manna speaks of the purity of Jesus. He was born into the world without sin and without taint of the human nature. In fact, he was not even able to sin. He lived without sin so that he might die for our sin on the cross. Number four, Exodus 16, verse 1, 13 to 14. It came at night. Jesus Christ was born on a dark night in Judea. He came to the world trapped in the spiritual darkness to give the light of love and life. And yet the Bible says, when the shepherd were watching their flock by night, they looked at the sky and it was lit up with the light because angels were singing and praising God. Yes, Jesus came by night, but he came to be the light of the world. And this bread will come at night and they will pick it at night and it was light of the world. So it needed only very little moonlight because it was pure white. In Exodus 16, 15, verse 15, they called it manna, which means, what is it? What is it? In other words, number five, it was misunderstood by those who found it. 
walipoipata ni nini hii what is it even jesus was misunderstood although he came to save the world even the people that he came to save did not understand him what is it but as they picked what is it they, it had a meaning every time they picked what is it god wants to speak to them every time we speak what is it god wants to speak we can pause a little bit and ask him what are you saying in this situation even every time they pick what it is number 6 verse 17 to 18 it was sufficient for every person's need for 40 years the manna was sufficient for the young ones for their growth the old one for their bones and the life for everyone in between the manna was right for everybody it was nutrition for everyone the growing boy would grow into manhood the young girl would grow into a womanhood by eating the same manna an expectant mother would have nutrient for the child the child she was carrying it was good sufficient for all and our savior is sufficient for all whether kings and rulers and paupers and poor people our savior is good number 7 it was sweet to the taste sweet to the taste exodus 16:31 the taste of the manna was like tasting wafers made with honey no doubt it was a pleasant surprise to everyone who placed it on their tongue and this is a great picture of the lord jesus christ to the sinner who receives him he is sweeter the psalmist tells us in psalm 34 verse 8 he says this o oh, test and see that the lord he is good blessed is that is the man that trusted in him oh test and see come and test and see that the lord he is good and finally it was to be kept and passed on to others exodus 16:32 and jesus is the same anyone who has received jesus is not for keeps is for you to share keep talking about him telling others about jesus So the manna is a brilliant picture of our Lord Jesus Christ. The manna serves to remind us who Jesus is and what we need to do with him. We need to tell others about him. Number 2, what the manna provided. Manna what they did provide. They collected those small white pieces of manna every day. And for nearly 13,000 days the people of Israel picked up the manna they gathered it they cooked it and then they ate it manna kept them from starving to death in the wilderness whatever they did for with it because some of them were sharp in numbers 18 118 all the people went about and gathered it and ground it in meals or beat it up in mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it and the taste it was as the taste of fresh oil they did whatever they were able to do but the bottom line manna was to sustain them and save them from starvation in this aspect manna is a portrait of the lord jesus christ like the manna that sustained the israelites in the wilderness the lord jesus sustains us and those who come to him by faith we are alive today by the grace of god it is him and his grace alone we are sustained and kept by our lord jesus christ so looking back at exodus 16 again we can come with a couple of truths also concerning that manna and i have two that i think i are critical to us number one the manna was appropriated by stooping stooping exodus exodus 614 to 15 the manna appears on the ground but in order for you to gather it the people had to bend their knees and go down and pick it and i want to say the same thing about our lord and savior friends we have to go on our knees 
It's not easy. But we can get it on our knees. He answers prayers. Let's go to pray. Let's pray. Prayer first. Join in. Let us pray because God answers prayers. I have not known prayer. God answers prayer because sometimes there are simple prayers like God remember me. Maybe you are struggling on an issue, but God, remember me, and you have faith that God will remember you, and before long you see some answers to the question that you had. It is important. It has to come on our knees. You can't come to the Lord with pride. You have to bow yourself. Number two, manna was appropriated by swallowing. Simple truth. Kumeza. If you want to leave, meza. If you want to leave, Meza. Lazima to meze. And this speaks to us of Jesus. You can, you can come to church. Carry the, light, the, the right Bible. The right Bible. The right Bible. Hear the wonderful sermons. Oh, wonderful songs. Eh? Pray and prayers. And do all the religious stuff that you can do, you want to do. But you will never be saved until you come to Jesus for yourself. Do you know we can sing here? And people go home saying, Leo nilimuona bwana. Na mungina na kuuliza, alikuwa mevalia nini? Because that one happens. Because the Lord speaks. Hey, niliguzwa. Liguzwa na nani? Alikuwa kaguzia watu upandegani. Ulika upandegani. So you might think, anaguzaga watu upande wangu. So uhamia upande wangu uje nyuma yangu, ama uka karibu na mimi. But it doesn't happen. You have to touch him yourself. Who touched me? Jesus is asking. The disciples are saying, so hata tumekuguza, but he's saying, no, 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 no. Wengine hamuku niguza, kuna mtu wali niguza. Kwa sababu kuguza yesu ni kuchoku, ni kuvuta kitu. You know, you pull your healing, you pull your need, you pull something from him. You have to do it yourself. But you have to swallow. For manner to help, these people had to swallow. We mezendani. So what are we saying? What is, the, what is the Lord trying to tell us? What is the provision that is being provided here? The following things are provided for the Christian who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, that Christian is blessed with his presence. The presence of the Lord, Matthew 28, 20. He, he is with us. He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. He will be with us until the end of time. He is our God. He, his presence walk with us. No wonder that Moses said, if you don't walk with us, we will not. We don't want just your presence. We want you to walk with us. We want you to walk with us. We want to feel you. And God had to tell him, Mukiniona mutadai. Just relax. You will see the things that I'm going to do. And no wonder the people saw the miracles. But Moses received message from God face to face. 1 John 14, 27, he blesses them with his peace. Peace even when everything else looks like it is crazy. He provides peace. Philippians 4, 19, he blesses them with his provision. He comes to provide for us. He is there with us. Acts 1, 8, he blesses them with his power. Power to witness. Power to love others. Power to live for God. Power to withstand everything that comes our way. Power. And then he blesses us with his promises. We know what he has promised to come to pass. Remember I told you Abraham's promise was passed to Isaac as a promise. Was passed to Jacob as a promise. And Joseph repeated the same promise that God was going to do it. And Moses is told by God to tell the children of Israel the promise is going to happen. So manna pictured the Lord Jesus Christ and manna provides for us all those things that I've talked about, presence, peace, provision, power, etc. Finally, what the manna promised. Because now if you miss this, then you miss the whole story of manna. We are told that manna ceased. So it must have finished its job. When, when something ceases, it's because their job is finished. Ata wakati ni tasiz, ni kwa sababu kazi yangu imeisha.
Do you know why people struggle with, much, uh, 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 with this statement? We refuse premature death. They struggle with the fact that for God, your business could have been finished. Maybe you are just born, cried, your mother was happy, and then you die. But for me, who is alive, that is premature, isn't it? Ah, a lady is 101 years, she dies. Premature. Then which one is not premature? When you finish your work, when your work on earth is ended, there is an appointment for you when your appointment shows up. That's what I believe in. I also believe that you can be 20, but you have finished your business. And when it is finished, it is finished. But another person can be in the hospital, in uh, ICU, for 30 years. Na atoke. Tuwe tukiripa biru. Sama, unajua uyu mzee? Alikuwa in a coma for six months. I will just hear your story. Me, I have a relative. She was in a coma. Tulimuona mwezi mzima. A couple of years ago. Na alitoka. Appointment yake haiku emefika. Hata kama uamini, si useme emeni huko kimoyo moyo tu. Uwabie moyo wako. Hata hivyo bishop anasema, ninaamini hata kama siyo sana. Hii dunia ni kali sana. So when mana sees, it's because mana had, a, had something. And that's why even when they said, what is it? It must have been something. What is it? Hiyo ni nini? Maybe they talked among themselves, what is it in metokea? Every time they said mana, they were saying, what is it in metokea? So they wanted an answer. And this is what I get, the spiritual meaning of this. The mana says this because that manna was echoing to them the promise of Abraham, the promise of Isaac, and the promise of, Aja, of Jacob, which means things will be better down the road. Manna was echoing the words of Joseph that God will visit you and take you to the land that flows with milk and honey. Manna was declaring that what Abraham received will come to pass that your children will be like the dust of the ocean. And if you can count the dust, then you, they will be counted. That was manna. manna. Then it had to cease so that the miracle can happen. Things will be better down the road. There is someone whose manna is seizing because something better is on the road. And you know, since we are tunapo, tunapo sikiza mungu, saingine, Tunasikira tuna, 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 tunashindwa kusema. Do you know why tunashindwa kwa kusema? Kwa sababu, niki kuambia ukweli, ukweli, kweli, kabisa, kabisa, eh, <laughs> unaweza sema ni nakuonea. Do you know there are some people, they will be saying, the God of Corona, come again. Not Corona, but God of. Why? Because what Corona did to them was to push them to a place that they are depending on God and God alone for their health, for their provision, for their business, and God has opened doors for their business. And if there was no Corona, they would still be comfortable somewhere else. May God of Corona show up. Now, if, if you know, one time I preached here and I preached something like Nebuchadnezzar, my servant, servant of God. And I changed the name Nebuchadnezzar and I say, Osama bin Laden, my servant. I looked at the people. But the truth of the matter is he made so many people go to the Lord Jesus Christ. Osama was just being used by God. There is something that has to cease. In your life. Sasa ukiambiwa lazima utafutua. Ili uone mungu. Si utanichukia. 
Lakini nikwambie kuna watu wakifutwa anaenda Karura, anaenda Heaven's Gate, anamuona Mungu. Kwa hivyo anaweza sema when I was fired I saw the Lord. But when you are fired are you happy? You are not. But after a few days you discover aha if I was not fired there is a story that I tell people. My being deported from Canada. You know, when I say it, and you look at me, Sinai G enjoy. That thing was not enjoyable when I was in the plane coming back. I asked God many questions. I even believe that God does not care. How can he put me in a plane, take me all the way to Canada, and then bring me back? But after a few months, I discovered God is, was just on show. Kunionesha, I am able to take you there. Alafu utasema, God, yes, you are able to take me there then. Then the second one, I am also able to take you back. Again, when I landed, atasi kutaka kuogea na watu. Hey, niliwambia ninaenda meaka mingi. Hata niliwambia kurudi sitarudi. Niliwambia mimi ni mtu wa Mungu nimeenda kabisa na nitaenda kabisa. Nitasoma masomo yote Canada. Nitahubiri Canada yote. Alafu seven days I'm back on the street of Nairobi. But later on I have picked pieces that I can praise God for. Canada had to cease in my heart, in my brain to become a pilot. Matatu industrial area. I had it to. That had to cease so that I can come back and preach the gospel. It had to cease. Someone listening to me, something has to cease or something has to die. A manna has to stop. Some of you are chewing bones. Wachana na hiyo mfupa. Mwana mungu wakupatie. Sasa kama wangiakula hiyo manna. Wangiapewa mkate na grains si wangewa watu wakule hiyo ati lazima ufanye kazi mingi ili ionje kama oil lazima ufanye kazi mingi katokee kakeki kwanza usiage iwe unga ukaushe iwe unga u, u, ukande eh, ukande kukanda sorry kukanda kukanda ni kufinya ile unga na mikono <laughs> ufinye hiyo unga utengeneze keki alafu ukule and yet god was saying from point this point that manner actually you don't need it some of you are holding into something that has not even been helpful to you but you are still holding it do you want your canon i told you you have to prepare to enter into your canon and the preparation si raisi but when you get there there are some things that will have to cease Wengine nasikia. Tamaa ya kuishi Nairobi lazima isizi. Unaweza niuliza bishop utaki niwe mshirika wako. It has nothing to do with me. I love you. I want you to stay there. But if it has ceased, you will be a problem with yourself and you will have a problem in your cell. You will have a problem in your ladies group. There will be problems. Hiyo kukalia kiti has to come to cease. Kuna wengine hapa, God has shaped you to be a minister to serve the Lord. It has to cease. Sasa sijui kama. Now I was talking to, to, to a young man. And he used an analogy. Nikijana ajaoa. Si Brian. Najua sasa watu wengi hapa mkisikia kijana hajaoa mnaona Brian. Kuna wengi hapa hajaoa. Jamaa wangu wako hapa ili ya wengi hawajao. But this is what he told me. Eh bishop. Si manyoya yametolewa. Si pamba imetolewa. Si miba inanichoma. Of course, nikamwambia it should actually and i told her the next in kamambia the next thing you will be kicked out 
utagongwa uteremuke utawekwa mabawa lakini utachezwa kama utapepetwa kidogo ukipelekwa juu na waachiri wao unachukua tena unapelekwa juu mpaka siku utaanza ku <coughs> save me alafu mabawa yako ipate nguvu Abu tuombe. Our gracious heavenly Father. True that something has to cease like manna ceased for us to move into the next level of our service to you and to get that which you have for us. I want to bless your people and I'm praying especially for those dear Lord for them to move into the next level. Something is dying. They value it but it is going to die. There are some that the comfort that they have had it is being 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 shaken but it is because they are getting into their promise their canon a place that flows with milk and honey. And my prayer is that that time that the shaking is taking place and the seizing is happening that your grace will be sufficient for them. And that like you provided for the children of Israel, they will not lack in any way. Because God, manna provided, just like Jesus has provided, joy, peace, provision, and power. May the same thing happen to your people in the mighty name of Jesus. And some looking at me and listening to me even at home have already gotten to where their manna has ceased. I pray dear father as quickly as it is seized with the children of Israel you provided they had flour they had grains may you provide for your servant so that they will not cry and complain but they will know it's a new season that is dawning on them and father I'm praying for testimonies that people will share about when manna ceased and you push them into their canon we are waiting for those testimony for this is our prayer in jesus name amen the lord bless you thank you